One of the most underrated moves of this entire NFL offseason was that the Denver Broncos were able to go out and get a guy that everybody else wanted, convince him to come to the Denver Broncos for a diminished role and for less pay. I'm going to break down why he would choose the Denver Broncos, what that means for this position room, and what that tells about this uh, team as a whole. If you're new to this channel and you like the Denver Broncos as well, helps me out a ton if you would hit that like and subscribe button. We know the NFL is king because of the great parody that always you have someone who goes from worst to first, that a team like the Houston Texans, who should have had the first overall draft pick and picked Bryce Young, they somehow luck into a game and they go from being irrelevant to making a deep playoff push last year. And that doesn't happen in other leagues. So we know the NBA, it's a make or miss league. If you make shots, you win. Uh, the Nuggets probably lost because Michael Porter Jr. wasn't hitting his threes. Uh, the difference is the NFL, it's not a player's league. It's all about coaching. And one of the crazy advantages we have in Denver of having the richest owner in sports is he can make up brand new positions to bring in coaching talent. Uh, and that's not part of the salary cap whatsoever. And so the talent is about equal. And so it's really about what coaches do you trust more? And so just this offseason, we were able to really create three brand new positions. We were able to get a scout from uh, New Orleans. We have like a, a senior passing game, like coordinator Carmichael again from New Orleans. And then the the underrated, underreported move and why I think he chose here was we were able to get former Denver Broncos uh, defensive back Jim Leonard to come in and essentially be our defensive backs coach. Now, what is crazy about that is he had multiple teams offering him and interviewing him for full defensive coordinator positions, which is like a dream, dream job. And so the question becomes like, why would you choose to come be a defensive backs coach when you could be a defensive coordinator, a much more prestigious job, a much higher paying job? I think the fact that he chose the Denver Broncos should make us all hyped about the future because there's a reason for him to do that. So part of the reason is that we were able to uh, circumvent that salary cap problem with the richest owner in sports, and he's more than just a defensive backs coach. He is called uh, the defensive uh, passing game coordinator, which is like a little more prestigious. Still, it doesn't have that, that, um, that line of being the uh, defensive coordinator, but it's a little elevated in that position. But you're hearing multiple players who played for him at Wisconsin, multiple guys who knew him when he played for the Saints and played for the Broncos say that he is just absolutely a football genius. Um, here in Sean Payton say, you know, we had Christian Parker who we really liked, but it was so amazing for him to go out and get him. You hear one of his, his players say that Leonard's uh, real superpower is taking the complex and making it easy to understand. And we saw that even just this week in Denver Broncos OTAs, as you see um, cornerbacks just have that game really simplified for him. And so bringing on a guy like Chris Abrams drain, uh, bringing in Riley Moss, who missed all of last year's uh, offseason activities, and being able to take a really complicated game and make it simple is going to be an incredible advantage for us to have him on our team. So the question becomes, why did he choose that? Obviously, defensive coordinator role, much better. I think part of the reason that he chose the Denver Broncos was echoed by multiple Pro Bowl players. We remember when Pat Sertan went to the Pro Bowl last year, He's every corner's favorite corner, and that all of these corners, Jalen Ramsey, all of them were saying Pat Sertan is the best corner in the league. And now we hear Devontae Adams, the wide receiver for the the Vegas Raiders, come out and say the exact same thing. Uh, we'll play a little bit here. Here's a, a snippet of Max Crosby's little podcast show with him talking about the talent of Pat Sertan. I'm going to break down why I think Pat Sertan in a Jim Leonard system is going to be unreal. And then what is he going to do with these other corner positions? We're going to take a look at that with some some of the tweets from OTA. So here's what Devontae Adams says about us having the GOAT on this roster. We Pat's, Pat's probably the best corner in the league right now, for okay. sure. Like, I, I, I love his game. Um, I got a lot of respect for him as a player. Um, I was trying to go in chronological order just to make sure it wasn't no OGs that I was leaving behind. But I'll probably say probably Pat – Again, saying trouble is, is a tough word for me to use because I wouldn't necessarily say that, but he did. You know, we played each other week one, and I would say, like, I would say he won that matchup because I didn't play anywhere, you know, you, you get going to as the, as the year goes, and that's yeah. week one. So I wasn't necessarily in my best football shape at that point, um, and I, I didn't convert on a couple balls that I probably should have. But 
Um, he's a really good player, man. I think he's he's going to probably have the, the league in a headlock yeah. for the next however however long. I mean, what was this, year two or three for him? Yeah, yeah three. I think three, yeah. He's going to have the the this league in a headlock for a long time. So, Jim Leonard, when he's choosing where to go, obviously you have the best corner in the game. And I don't care what, P, you know, PFF came out and ranked him lower and uh, put, you know, the Jets corner above him. But you have all the people who I actually respect who have to play against him say he's the best corner in the league. And so now you are in a place where you know you have a lockdown corner on one side and we've got tons of talent elsewhere that I think is really ready to step up and really ready to thrive under this Jim Leonard system. And the player I'm looking at and incredibly excited about is what is Riley Moss going to look like under Jim Leonard's leadership? And uh, we just looked last year that because he had to miss the preseason, he had a, a core surgery that he had to have on some like his oblique muscles or something like that. And so he missed all of training camp and the preseason, which is just invaluable to those rookies. And so he had a, a longer time to get back up to speed. But then when he came in and played, he was our best gunner and our best, um, George Payton said he was our best player on special teams on the, the gunner team. We know that the gunning team isn't going to be as important next year with a rule change in the kickoff. You don't need fast dudes who can get down there and make a tackle. It's going to be more of a line of scrimmage. And so we're really ready at a place where we don't need him to be that that gunner on the kickoff. Obviously, he still can do that on the punt return. But what we're going to see here is we're going to see him, uh, his RAS score absolutely off the chart, that uh, RAS is relative athletic score, and they score you against the top players at your position uh, since they've started collecting this, which is like 20-some years. And so he's 9.66 out of 10. And it's just insane that you look at all of these metrics that really matter, that he's one of the fastest corners ever at the 10 yards uh, split, which is, you know, really the um, a lot of routes are in that 10 yard range that he's going to lock that down. So when you have the best corner in the game on one side, you got Riley Moss. We know Jaquan McMillian is going to dominate in the slot. And we're seeing here um, the report out of OTAs. Uh, is that the Denver Broncos are really doing a lot more press coverage, which we all have been screaming for that we know. Like we got a, the best press corner that Pat Sertan can shut down a dude, and we're seeing a lot of this positional versatility. And so as we lose Justin Simmons and, and need to acclimate P.J. Locke and Brandon Jones and J.L. Skinner hopefully coming in, the fact that we have some positional versatility and we have such a deep corner room um, if you look at our corners and what they could do, that that position room becomes one of the best rooms in the game, in my opinion. If Riley Moss can step up and be the corner we think he can, we already know Jaquan was one of the highest scored PFF um, slot corners in the league. And so if you have the best regular corner in the league and Pat Sertan, the best slot corner, can Riley Moss or Damari Mathis step in? And if Jim Leonard's true superpowers take the complex and make it simple we got to be extremely hyped about that uh, that is the position room I can't wait to watch in camp and just watch the changes that we are going to see uh, because I think our defense is really going to step up and we know the biggest moves the Broncos did this offseason were on the offensive side of the ball with now having a quarterback who can run Sean Payton system. And so when people are predicting the Denver Broncos are only going to win five games next year my mind is just like spinning because I know I'm a homer, but we have just gotten better at so many positions and added coaching talent to get the best out of the positions we've already improved at. And so I think the sky is the limit. I definitely believe, and I hope in Broncos country, we all believe. The bank. Let's go.